So here are the 5 biggest lessons that I learned after buying over 100 houses and only 99 doors are rentals. Lesson number 1, you guessed it, location. If you have been following this channel for a while now, you know I always joke about there are only 3 rules in real estate investing. Rule number 1, location. Rule number 2, location. Rule number 3, location. This is just my rules. I don't buy properties that are in the ghetto or in the middle of nowhere. If you buy in the ghetto, then you should have a very high insurance cost because it's a high crime area. And you'll be amazed how much you need to pay for property tax for those ghetto houses. Houses. There's a reason why Detroit is still like that. And this is not just in Detroit. Look at Memphis, Tennessee, Birmingham, Alabama. And here's another factor. They don't rent enough. The rent is very low. If you have been listening to some podcasts on YouTube, you probably heard of the 1% rule whenever it comes to a rental property. Which means the monthly rent needs to be at least 1% or greater than the purchase price. For example, if you pay 100 grand for a piece of property, 1% of 100 grand is $1,000. Which means for the $100,000 property, the monthly rent needs to be at least $1,000. And in states like Mississippi or Alabama, you can actually buy some houses for 60 grand each. And they can rent anywhere between six and $800, which is greater than 1% rule. But be careful, if a toilet gets clogged, a plumber is not going to charge you a percentage of the rent to repair that toilet. A plumbing call is $200 in that case. For a house that rents for $600 a month, that's a third of the monthly rent. And for a house that rents for $3,000 a month, that's one fifteenth of the rent. And I'm just saying, solely by stats, which tenant is more responsible to not to throw whatever is not supposed to go down the drain? The tenant lives in the $600 a month house or $3,000 a month house? Look, whenever you need to repair something, it is a lot harder to keep up for a low rent house because the rent just doesn't justify it. And then you don't keep up with the property and they just let the property go down, which eventually drive down the property value. And one of the most important factor in real estate investing is appreciation. Which I have a video coming up very soon explaining why appreciation is the king of returns in real estate investing. Even more important than cash flow, believe it or not. So if you want a quick formula for picking locations, this is my rule. So if a house is in the ghetto or middle of nowhere, off on the main street with lots of traffic, houses with no backyard, houses on a hill, butted against the railroad track or interstates, I don't buy them. I just don't. Some of y'all may argue I'm buying it as a rental. I don't care. Yeah, but you need to give yourself an exit strategy. If something goes wrong, you won't be able to exit it. Alright, lesson number two. This is obvious and kind of embarrassing. You don't need to spend thousands of dollars to buy a guru's course to invest in real estate. I have an embarrassing story to confess. When I just started real estate investing, I fell for this trap. I went to this guy called Chris Krohn. I went to his so-called Limitless seminar. And then you gotta know, these gurus are essentially salesmen. They're trying to sell you something. What they're trying to do is get you in the door first. Once you're in the door, you're more committed. They're going to upsell you something. Something like a mastermind group or inner circle. Pretty much the same thing. When I was at the Chris Krohn's conference, I fully understood what the word narcissistic means. He was pretty much talking about himself the whole time. And let's just be honest, his intention was not trying to teach you how to do real estate. His intention was trying to make money off of you. So he can make more money. You really think these gurus are that kind? They're willing to share their business secrets for $100 ticket price? They're in the business for money. Yes, I've said real estate is a people's business. You may argue you meet more people at this kind of events. Yeah, but mostly you meet hustlers just like yourself. No offense to you, if you're watching this video, you're trying to learn something, right? Others are too. So you're grouping yourself with all the audiences instead of the hosts. We have all heard of saying you need to surround yourself with the people that you want to be one day. Well, how do you do that without spending thousands of dollars? You find someone local that's been doing better than you and offer to pay for their lunch. Everyone's gotta eat. Once they're out on lunch with you, unload your questions, and do pay for his lunch if you want him to pick up your phone again. And all of these leads to lesson number three. Real estate is a people's business. Real estate is not a finance or construction business. It's a people's business. It's all about who you know and who knows you. Is it whom you know or who you know? Let's say you're trying to flip a house. In real estate investing, you make money when you buy it, which means you need to buy a good deal. If people don't know who you are, how can they find you if they have a good deal? Look, if you're just getting started, you need to make yourself known among your friends and families first. Let them know you're trying to buy a house preferably with equity in it. So whenever they're trying to sell their house with equity, or they know someone who has a fixer up to sell, you will most likely get the first dip. And also in real estate investing, you're constantly dealing with the contractors, realtors, wholesalers, bankers, lenders, city officials, lawyers, politicians sometimes too. And that's why I said real estate investing is a people's business. Look, I can honestly tell you this. I own almost $10 million worth of real estate right now. And my biggest assets are not those real estate. My biggest assets are my connections and my credibilities. Lesson number four, you make money when you buy, not when you sell. 
If you want to make money, you gotta buy them right to begin with. Look, at this point, I've flipped over 100 houses, and I can tell you over 99% of them are found off market. These are not the deals that you can find off Zillow, Realtor.com, or MLS. I have only bought one deal on market. I bought that deal $35,000 below asking price, and guess how much money I made after flipping it? Only $35,000. So whenever you buy a deal with equity in it, let's say you have $100,000 worth of equities in it. And if you hold it long term, believe it or not, that's actually anywhere between $200,000 and $250,000 worth of payments. You ever looked at it this way? When you pay the right price and buy it right, options open up. You can wholesale it, you can flip it, you can keep it as a rental, you can burn it, you name it. If you want to generally question how I do these deals, I'll give you an example. Let's say you pay $300,000 for a house that needs about $50,000 worth of work. Its after repair value is about $500,000. So you have $350 all in. $350 divided by $500 is about 70%, which means you have a 30% equity position. Usually, if I have less than 15%, I don't buy it. If I have around 20%, I wholesale it. Anywhere between 20 and 30%, that's a flip for me. If I have 30% or more, I burn it. Buy, rehab, rent, refinance, repeat. Usually, it depends on the house as well, because for higher-end houses in A-class neighborhoods, I usually just flip it. The return is just not there as a rental. B and C-class, that's a hold. And I already said it, I don't buy these. These? Nuts. If I do come across a good deal in D-class neighborhood, I just wholesale it. And number five, the final lesson, which is the biggest lesson that I learned. It is also very obvious, but nobody follows it. There's no such a thing as getting rich quick. But... If you buy right and leverage it correctly, real estate investing can actually return you anywhere between 50 to 70% return year over year. Yes, you heard it right, year over year. Tell me a stock that can return 50% return year over year. And can you put the insurance policy on that stock? You know the word generational wealth? The word generation? In order for you to make that kind of return, you need to hold a piece of real estate for at least 20 years, preferably 30 years. Or even longer, longer is better. In real estate investing, you not only have cash on cash cash flow returns, a lot of times people don't factor in the rent appreciation, property value appreciation, principal pay down, and tax savings. Whenever you buy a piece of real estate, you pay a fixed amount as your down payment, which means you're locked in the purchase price. But your appreciation is compounding, so is your rent appreciation. And here's the thing, if you put 20% down and finance 80%, which means you have total control of the entire deal for only one-fifth of the money, which means you 5 access your returns on your appreciations. And that's why I said in lesson number one, location, location, location. Why? Because in better locations, they usually have better appreciations. And if you add up all these factors together, the total return, believe it or not, is anywhere between 50 to 70% year over year. Believe the Asian on his math. You want to know how I got that number? Detailed math breakdown video coming soon. See what I did there? So be sure to subscribe. Look, if you're trying to get started in real estate investing, or even buying your first home, if you're trying to figure out what percentage you should put down as your down payment, trust me, the answer is not what you think. You really need to watch this video.